Hello guys, welcome to the latest video produced by Equine Productions TV, latest live show. Um, do have a look on Equine Productions YouTube channel because over the last month or so, um, EPTV have produced loads of videos on a wide range of topics from show jumping, dressage, loads of equestrian topics, as well as plenty in racing. So do go and check them out on Equine Productions YouTube channel. But welcome to the latest show where today we're going to be talking all things furlough factor, which has been a bit of a social media storm in recent weeks. It's a social media talent competition run by Racing Welfare. And I'm delighted to be joined by Gemma Waterhouse, Chief Operating Officer of Racing Welfare, and also the furlough factor judge, Luke Harvey. Good day to you guys. Afternoon. How are things? Hi. Good, thank you. Good. Well, Gemma, look, I'm going to start with you because how did the idea um, for the, the furlough factor, how did it, it come about? So it's the um, it's a furlong factor. The play is on the furlong as in the distance. Um, so it came about because um, I was doing the reforecasting and budgeting for racing welfare and I had my head in my hands kind of thinking, oh, my God, this is going to be a really, really tricky year for us because we normally have a whole host of fundraising events that run from um, March until the end of the summer, which raises about half a million pounds in income. And with those all gone, it was a real challenge for me to work out how on earth we were all going to pull together and get some, get, you know, replenish those funds. So we were all having to think virtually and uh, I was sitting enjoying I was lying in the sun, sitting, enjoying Angus and Deirdre Johnson playing um, beautifully. And I thought to myself, I wonder if there's more talent in racing that we could uh, that we could harness here. And that's how we started the idea of the Furlong Factor. We're lucky we've got um, Rod Street, uh, who heads up GBR as one of our trustees. So I got straight on the phone to him and asked him what he thought of the idea and he loved it and he finessed the, the programme and how it would work. And so GBR, have, have held our hand and we've managed to get it going so it's it's worked <laughs> it certainly has apologies I, I know it's the furlong factor i think i've got furlough on my mind for some strange reasons or quarantine is sending me mad um <laughs> but in terms of um have you been surprised by the take up and the popularity of it definitely i think i think initially it was one of those things we thought well look if we got 20 auditions we can make this work. So we've really, if we can push really hard and get 20, we'll be delighted. And we had 80, it was crazy. We had, and so many people made a huge effort. There were some brilliant ones that didn't make it through where people had gone to, they'd all dressed up and, um, you know, they had whole yards involved and people working at race courses and someone had obviously spent a long time pulling clips together and it was amazing. So um, yeah, we were really, really surprised at that. And then the first night it was all, uh, everyone in the senior management team at Racing Welfare was online feeling incredibly anxious, like, is it going to work? Is it going to work? And, um, you know, we were lucky that Luke had agreed to be involved right from the start. And so we knew it looked professional. We knew it looked good, but it was, were people going to watch it and were people going to vote? And we had a thousand votes on the first night straight off. So everyone then was able to have a glass of wine and just go, OK, it worked. Luke, you brought that slightly uh, touch of Hollywood to it, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> what Bruce Willis look yeah I know what you mean uh, no, I was just saying, how does it feel to be um, a bit of a Simon Cowell in the last week <laughs> <laughs> luckily I don't actually have to judge anybody because uh, I'm tone deaf but you know obviously we're in really difficult times at the moment and it gives you you know a lot of time to sort of self-evaluate so there's a lot of people a lot of charities obviously out there uh, shorter funds at the moment and, and when you look, look through them racing welfare is very, very near the top of the list for me because they just do so much across the board that, that people, even within horse racing, don't realise goes on behind the scenes. You know, we're not, they're not just supporting, you know, the people that work in the yards, which, of course, are the backbone of racing, but they're supporting people across the board. You know, if you're connected with the industry, you know, you, you receive help from racing welfare. So it's just so important to... Um, yeah, and I, I've uh, announced the winners uh, for six evenings. Had to stay relatively sober to do it by 10 o'clock. Uh, <laughs> helped by the Jack Russell Bramble. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's been fun. And Joe, like Gemma and everyone else, I, I, I've been absolutely amazed. You go into these yards, you hear people who can't even whistle. You can't believe it. have found all this sort of talent that's gone unearthed before. And um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's, 
look, it, it's got to it's got to have a fun undertone, which is which it, it certainly has. Uh, but it's a it's sort of putting out an important message that uh, rating welfare needs funds desperately. You say a bit of a fun element. It certainly has, and you, and you brought plenty of that um, with your involvement with it. Um, talk me through some of the um, the situations that you've announced the winners. Well, we've, we've had you in the bath, well, in bed, in, the, in, the, in bed with a dog. You know, something totally <laughs> new. Me uh, <laughs> in the bath, which no one wanted to see. Ed Chamberlain's become obsessed with my um, M and S slippers. Uh, <laughs> he wants them auctioned. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they'd make a lot, to be honest with you, but um, I'm not a big pyjama user, so um, even Rob Dakin, head of Sky Sports Racing, was was asking me, why do you wear that Crystal Palace top all the time? So, well, it's part of my pyjamas, but um, no, it's, look, it's, it's been fun. I've, I've really enjoyed doing it. It's been, it's been absolutely fascinating knowing what the, the, four, the four people each evening are, are going to be and who you think is going to go through, and some amazing talent out there, and, and I'm actually going to be presenting the final. I'm going to be uh, in the Sky Sports studios um, uh, in Isleworth at five o'clock on Saturday, uh, producing the, a little show there live. We'll hear from the winner, hear the winner singing. So it's going to be it, it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm expecting a big uptake from the racing industry. That's great that it's going to be on on live on Sky Sports Racing. Um, Gemma, just remind us of the format because, um, as you said, you had eighty entries, a series of heats, and what we're now into the the top eight. But how is it sort of all? You know, how many votes have you been getting, and the window of opportunity to vote and things? Yeah, so we had um, the, the 80 went down to 24, the 24 went through to the six heats that ran over six nights, four each night. We had loads and loads of votes, so we had 1,000 votes on the first night, um, and we consistently saw high numbers of votes coming in across all six nights. Some of them um, were painfully close. Uh, I have the, the, the luxury of being able to see behind the scenes the voting, and I had my head like, I was like, oh my God, at one point, you know, there was two people that were just kept doing this and were two votes apart from each other. It was incredibly close. Um, so that was wonderful. And now we've had a little bit of a breather for a chance for those eight finalists to record a second song so that the, the watching public get to hear a bit more from them. And they will all, um, uh, all of the songs will be up by Friday and JJ who from Union J who's our sort of expert who's been um, casting his opinions will do a little video that will send out on Friday nights to tell people what his thoughts are and his choices and then the betting opens so Tote partnered with us on this which was fantastic and the betting opens randomly at 2.30 a.m. on Saturday for anyone who's a bit of a night owl you can bet 2.30 a.m. Um, and the, the betting will run through until 1.30 in the afternoon on Saturday. And then the voting opens at two o'clock because the betting has to finish before the voting opens. So people can vote on Saturday from two o'clock and then the winner will be announced live by Luke on uh, Sky Sports Racing just after the programme will start at five and the announcement will be something like quarter past or 20 past five. So a nail biting wait for Rebecca, Lucy and Lara and the rest of the guys who are... It, it is seriously exciting. It's 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 really um, evolved into something um, far bigger than I'm I'm sure that you expected. Um, but let before we talk to some of the contestants that are going to be um, well, hopefully appearing on Saturday in that live show, but um, uh, are going to certainly be in the final. We're going to hear from three contestants. But before that, let's have a little reminder then of the top eight who've made it through into Saturday's final.
know you got plenty more to offer, but I guess I've been quite enough. I'm that stain there on your bed sheet. You're my diamond in the rough. Darling, I'll bathe your skin. I'll even wash your clothes. Give me some candy after my moment uh incredible every time i listen to it it just i mean i have zero musical talent so i'm absolutely in awe of all of the anyone who entered but those eight finalists are absolutely fantastic um you've obviously been so bold over luke you you, you fell off your stool a moment right <laughs> it was the thought of that rihanna video um but anyway no um it's it's been it's been absolutely brilliant and and the confidence i think as much as anything I think the confidence that everyone's shown and, and, the, and the, the obvious enjoyment that's come out in their performances has, has really made it for me. And as well, the sort of camaraderie on when you're looking on social media, a lot of people that unfortunately didn't make it through to the final have really been behind everybody. And, and it's lovely that all the various yards and, and various organisations where people work have actually got behind, behind the contestants as well. So it's been... It's been it's been really really fun. I'm just so delighted they haven't asked me to sing because they're absolutely desperate. We got we got you singing at the start, Luke. Well, yeah, well, I'm sort of yeah. What? That's it. You're yeah, lucky that, that, that we're not going to ask it. you to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's um hear now from let's now hear from some of those contestants who um have definitely got some more musical talent we'll start with lara telfer who was the the first um person you saw in that video congratulations lara um how does it feel to be in the final end of the the furlong factor oh thank you very much it is a bit surreal to be honest um i sort of put the video in as a bit of a whim to be honest it just was sort of happened the day before well the day of it closing so uh i can't believe i am where i am now to be honest it's very exciting because you said that you you did it because your sister has asked you to sing at her wedding. Yeah. So have you ever entered a, a talent competition before? No, I I haven't. Um, my sister it sort of was the right time to be honest because my sister got uh, engaged in January and she'd asked me whether I would and I was a bit like, oh, I'm not sure. Um, and I thought, well, this came up and my family and my friends were sort of like, you need to give it a whirl. So I, I thought I'd give it a go and. If I can take a recording of myself and send it in, I should be able to sing live. And, you know, it's now been seen by a few people. So uh, I think I will now be singing for my sister. So it's very exciting. And what's been the reaction from some of your work colleagues? I mean, you're, you're, um, remind me of your role at Cheltenham Racecourse. 
Um, so I'm marketing manager at Chatham Race Course. I'm covering my manager's maternity leave, so it's a good opportunity for me at the moment to do that. But uh, they've all been really supportive and really pushed me into doing it. As soon as the competition actually came out, my line manager, Matthew, sent a message on our WhatsApp group and said, Lara, you have to enter this. And I was like, not a chance am I doing that? But then I just sort of talked myself around and everyone sort of said, oh, go and give it a whirl. So I thought, what have I got to lose? I'll just give it a go. So, yeah. Even, no. it, even when we told you you were going through, Lara, when I gave you a call, you almost dipped out then, didn't you? <laughs> it took some convincing. Gemma was very kind. She gave me a call. I was like, well, I'm not sure I want to do a video bio. I, that does, it does not really me talking into the camera. And uh, she said, uh, just just do it. You you know, you just give it a go. And I, I did, and I sent it in, and it was fine. I got over my little fear of doing it, and it was it was grand. But yeah, it, it, I nearly pulled out at the last minute. I was like, if, if, I, if I can't submit it without the video bio, that's very fine. I'll just pull out. <laughs> I had to use all my best powers of persuasion to say, Laura, I think you've got a really good chance. Just do it. You can do it. <laughs> Oh. Well, you did a great job, um, but now right. you can do it all again. Um, you sang what was it, "Wings" by Birdie in the first um, in the first round. What are you going to be singing for everyone in the final? Um, so I am singing James Bay, "Let It Go." Um, I stumbled across it. I didn't actually know the song. I know of the song, but I didn't know it to sing it. So uh, my husband actually said, "Give that one a go." I think you'll sound nice. He likes James Bay, and I do like James Bay as well. Um, so I'm singing that for the final, uh, and I think it's coming out at two o'clock today. I think so. Yeah. And any, I mean, beyond doing this, the, the furlong factor, I mean, what would you like to get out of it? Are there any ambitions of perhaps doing some, some I don't know, performing at other people's weddings or forming a band? To be honest, I've not really thought that far ahead. The first hurdle was to sort of see if I got the confidence to do it in the first place and then to potentially sing in at my sister's wedding. I haven't thought anything beyond that. I, I'm really pleased to be where I am now. Um, I feel very lucky to be in the final. There's some great singers among the people that I'm up against. Um, and every time I'm like, am I in against these people? Like, they're insane. Um, but no, it's, it's really exciting. But no, I haven't looked any further ahead than where I am now. <laughs> and who do you think then, um, putting yourself aside, who do you, do you see as the, the favorite for the, to take the final? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one because I do think it's, it's gonna be tight. Um, I really like Fred Tett. I really like Lucy, Bar Lucy Barry's performance. Um, I thought Lily's performance yesterday was amazing. Um, all of them really. And I thought Annie Martin was also very good. I was surprised she didn't get through the first heat. So all amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, uh, Lara, loads and loads of luck for Saturday. We're looking forward to seeing your final song announced um, this afternoon. Good luck. And I think your, your sister's definitely um, got you nailed down for her wedding now. There's, there'll be no wriggling out of that one, will there? <laughs> Thanks, Chaz. Thank you very much. No worries. Good luck uh, to uh, Lara Telfer, who's the marketing manager at Cheltenham Racecourse. Moving on then, let's now talk to uh, Lucy Barry, who Lara did mention. Um, Lucy, you're a, a jockey, a bloodstock agent. I've seen you on the radio for BBC Berkshire. You, you see, are very, very involved in horse racing. That's all I can say. Um, and I didn't know that you absolutely have a, a completely belter of a voice. Um, what an amazing performance. Um, what were your thoughts then entering um, entering the furlong factor? Oh, I had a few people message me. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had a few people a few people message me and said, "Oh, we've got to do this." So um, I just thought, why why not? It's for race and welfare. Um, I'll give it a go. And have you, have you ever have you ever sung in public before? Or um, I <laughs> I actually like singing in the shower. Which is why, which is why I've done most of my uh, videos in my bathroom. It's where I find myself most comfortable singing. The acoustics very good in there. Um, but it, it, has it inspired you to perhaps then perform out of your bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> um, to be fair, I I worked in Australia in racing for about a year, and me and my friend travelled Australia and probably done a karaoke tour all the way around Australia. <laughs> Um, so that was quite fun, but uh, I think I might just stick to horse racing. Well, I don't know. I think you've got an, an amazing voice. Um, what song are you going to be singing in the final? I am going to be singing Kiss Me by Sixpence, None the Richer. Has it been quite hard to find another song? Or, I mean, have you got, did you sort of have lots that you could choose from? Or was it a bit of a challenge um, to, to decide what to, to perform? Yeah, I think Gemma will tell you, I, I was sort of panicking last minute because I was like, 
oh, I'm not sure what song to sing. And I had like 12 hours to decide what, what kind of song to sing. Uh, but I think, you know, I think this song is quite an upbeat song um, rather than my last song that was quite a sad song. Um, but it's quite an upbeat song and I think everyone will, will like it. So fingers crossed. Gemma, did you have another, um, do you have to work your magic again on, on Lucy persuading her to, to, to um, keep her entries going? I think, I think Lucy was in the most unfortunate position because she was the last one to know she's through. So all the other finalists obviously knew earlier in the week that they needed to produce a second song or, or we would encourage them to produce a second song. So it was definitely harder for her. I think some of the contestants sing a lot, maybe sing a lot more um, and so have their kind of repertoire of songs that they know they're good at. Um, and so that was obviously a bit of a challenge for Lucy to think, oh God, what's, you know, what's my voice going to suit? But she's done an amazing job and it'll, you know, it'll be brilliant. She's a great singer. It's, it's, I think what people won't realise is actually how the singers lack confidence. So when I rang them all to let them know they were through, I had six or seven people, um, when I told them were really shocked and said, um, I actually am really worried. Did... Did, am I the only one that's taken it seriously or has everybody done like a joke one and am I going to look really silly and you know they were really worried about it and I reassured everyone no it's a serious singing competition I promise you all of the 24 that have gone through are very talented but it's amazing how you know you sort of watch them and think god if I had that voice I'd sing all the time and yet them themselves they don't necessarily have that confidence so hopefully this competition will give them the confidence when they realize how many people are enjoying listening to them. Lucy, I liked your answer when on the video. Remind everyone what did you what do you want to get out of um, the the furlong factor? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. that, was, that was a little bit of a joke. <laughs> My boyfriend. <laughs> so, have you had letters flying through the the post box? Yeah. I have not had one cheeky little like message at all. I'm no, really that doesn't. <laughs> Well, look, I'm, I'm sure that you'll be getting all the, the, the private messages on Twitter, no doubt, over the next <laughs> weekend. <laughs> Good luck, Lucy, and thank you, thank you very much. much. Good luck in the final. Um, and finally, our third um, finalist we're going to have a chat to is Rebecca Thomas. Um, hi, Rebecca, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thanks. So Rebecca, you're based in Bridgend in South Wales and you work for your uh, grandmother, Delph Thomas, who's an, an Arab trainer. She is, yeah. And um, as I said to you, I think before, everyone everyone sort of associates Wales with beautiful singing, beautiful voices. So um, you certainly have that. Tell me about your sort of background in singing. Um, have you done much of it before? Have you performed in public much? Yeah, I've sung from a, a young age. Um, I've done more kind of musical theatre. Um, I've done a few shows and things, but filming myself is really not my kind of thing. I, I hate watching myself back. <laughs> so when it comes to a video, if I could record myself, that's fine. But I think just without a video, but yeah, watching it back is not for me. <laughs> How much have you enjoyed the furlong factor? Yeah, it's been great. It, great opportunity and yeah there's some amazing singers throughout the competition it's really been fab and so you're through to the final what song have you got for for us on saturday or for it's going to be released uh, later today yeah um i'm singing um it was tough i had a few songs that i was debating upon um and my family were kind of like oh it'd be really good if you could sing something um that kind of related to everything going on at the moment so the song i chose is a song by leona lewis uh, footprints in the sand. I just felt it was quite relatable and uh, the lyrics are quite meaningful with everything going on at the moment. So, yeah. How are you finding lockdown? Are you, um, how's sort of the yard keeping going with it, with your, um, your grandmother training the Arabs? Well, um, at the moment we've got um, a great girl that works for Nana as well, Izzy. So she kind of runs everything behind the scenes. Um, I, unfortunately, I'm not really at the farm much at the moment because I also work as a residential care worker. So um, I'm working a lot, but we have horses turned away uh, close to where I work. So on my way to work and when I'm in work, I often check on them. But unfortunately, because where I'm working at the moment, I'm not allowed near, obviously, my family. So I haven't really been going at the farm that much at the moment. 
so I'll be glad for it all to be over and get back to normality. <laughs> yeah, weren't we all? So you're working in a, in a care home then as well? Yeah, with children. Oh, okay. And um, in terms of then for, for this weekend, um, who do you see as, I asked, I asked Lara this, who do you see as the sort of, that could possibly be the favourite? Who do you fear the most? Um, I, I don't personally know him, but I really liked Fred Tex. He seems just like a really likeable person. Um, his videos seem quite fun. I enjoyed watching his. Um, I suppose the ones that are out at the moment, uh, Lily, she there was one of her yesterday. That was a, a really a stunning cover. So yeah, that was amazing as well. But yeah, there's there's so many great singers, so it's, it's hard to choose. <laughs> and what would you hope to get out of the competition? Well, I mean, if I'm honest, I'm shocked to get where I am now. I've had some amazing support, which I really did not expect from so many people, friends, family, um, people I don't know. A lot of people are embracing, have got behind me as well. So um, I'm just pleased to get as far as I got now, really. So anything else obviously is a bonus and I'm just glad to do my part for racing welfare. So. Well, look, good luck to you then in Saturday's final. Thanks very much for joining yeah. us. Uh, that's Rebecca Thomas. Thanks to the three finalists, Lara, uh, Telfer, Lucy Barry and Rebecca Thomas. Um, Luke, a word on those three, but also, I suppose, on the the, the, um, the, the eight that have made it through to the final, because there's a, a broad range, isn't there, of, um, of singers, but also, you know, some people playing the piano, some people playing the guitar <laughs> and different styles. Yeah, I, I, just like everyone else, I've been absolutely amazed at the, at the standard and the enthusiasm behind, behind the, the contest. Um, yeah, it's a great, it's a great price, fifteen hundred pounds for the winner. You know, a, a trip to the Prix de l'Art de Triomphe. You know, uh, it, out there in a private box, so absolutely, you know, top performance from there. So, yeah, it's 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 worth winning, but it's 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 good for racing welfare in the sense that it really highlights the job that they do, and and as well as obviously they want to win the prize, they want they want to win the competition. But it's it's lovely that every one of the contestants has been talking about racing welfare, and they're they're behind it, and that is. That is the first thing on their mind. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm a bit bit nervous that I get it wrong and announce the wrong one or something on, on Saturday evening. But um, it's it's going to be fun and it's it's really done its job and I'm, I'm loving it. Well, like you and the Oscars, because that's gone wrong as well. So don't worry about that, Luke. It'll be absolutely fine. Um, Gemma, Luke's obviously touched on it. Of course, the whole thing is all about raising money for racing welfare. Um, talk to me about the, the campaign um, Night In For A Night Out. So the third on factor, there's sort of three reasons why we wanted to do it. One is to raise money, uh, to raise funds, but there's also two other things which are really important. One is racing welfare spends a lot of time throughout the year doing community events, pulling the racing community together, helping to prevent loneliness and isolation um, and preventative work to stop people falling into, um, into situations where they're not feeling good about themselves and things start to deteriorate. And those community events are incredibly important and are a real challenge to have now when we can't all meet. So we're doing lots of virtual things like virtual coffee mornings and things. And this is another thing that we've done, which is kind of ticks that box. I think we can all agree that lots of the racing community have got behind it and that's fantastic. So we managed to kind of tick that box. Um, and then we also wanted to make sure that we could get everyone's attention so that we can tell them about our services. You know, with lots of things locked down and um, uh, lots of services not running, you could you might assume that racing welfare isn't running, but we are. We Within a couple of days, everyone was working from home all the services are fully operational and we're needed now more than ever because it's a crisis and it's really hard on people financially and mentally. And so racing welfare are still here ready to help anyone who needs it and works in racing. And what's been lovely actually is the contestants and the finalists in particular um, come from that real spread across the industry that we look after. Luke mentioned it before, we look after everyone in racing. So, um, you know, whether it's Lara at a race course, whether it's Rebecca who comes from Arab racing, if it's someone who came from point to point we've got freddie who's an amateur jockey um you know we've got a real spread that shows the sort of diverse group of people that we support in racing um and then you know this sort of final thing is around raising money um and it's really really important i think people kind of take racing welfare a bit for granted oh yes it's there um yeah racing welfare can help they can support we're not funded by the government you know we don't get any automatic industry funding we generate all our own income and so you know we we just can't take for granted that racing welfare will be there you know so as you know luke said we actually do need a bit of help now 
we help lots of people, but right now we need a bit of help. And so we're asking people, if you're enjoying the Furlong Factor, it's something that's, you know, provided some entertainment for you, then please consider donating the cost of a night out. So something you would have done around this time, spent a Saturday night down the pub or going for a nice meal or, um, you know, uh, my night out was uh, dancing on the tables in Folly Deuce in, uh, in the uh, ski resort, um, then to donate that money to Racing Welfare, because uh, you can't have that night out at the moment. You've got a night in watching Fertile Factor. Absolutely. Well, we don't, we're all dreaming of being back on the, the ski slopes and dancing on the table. Yeah. <laughs> in a different light now. That's great, I know. <laughs> Whatever you're into, um, however you like to spend your nights out, um, do bear that in mind, as Gemma says. Um, put the money that you perhaps would have spent on a night out on this Saturday um, and put it and, and, and donate it to Racing Welfare because it is a hugely worthwhile charity. Um, thank you very much to you guys. I just, I guess I just remind me, Luke, then. So five o'clock, you're going to be live on Sky Sports um, Racing to announce the winner live. Yeah, Channel 415, uh, yeah, be coming live from the, the studios there. So, yeah, looking, looking forward to it. You know, we see that the standard's incredibly high, uh, but most importantly, it is highlighting the work that Racing Welfare do. So if you can uh, donate, it'd be greatly appreciated. But it's going to be, you know, the most important thing is it's going to be really fun. It is going to be fun. So um, the, the betting opens, I think, well, early morning on Saturday. So um, Tota running a market on it. You can have a look at all the finalist videos on the Racing Welfare Twitter feed. Um, but good luck to all of those eight finalists. Tune in on Saturday then, uh, five o'clock on Sky Sports Racing. Um, and most importantly, donate. Show your support uh, for Racing Welfare on, and for those incredibly brave and talented individuals. We'll see you again soon. Thanks. Cheers. Bye.